Hey guys, welcome, welcome. The day before Friday, the day before Bible competition. Happy Thursday. Okay, let's get into it today. Look, the, for like the first time in a while, the title is not Abraham. The title is Isaac Isaac because today he gets his new what? His new wife. His only wife, okay? Not new, like as if he had an old one. Okay, who died in yesterday's story? Sarah did. Sarah died in yesterday's story. And so we know that Esau is super sad. So Abraham decides this is the perfect time to give him a wife, prepare him to be the father of Israel. We don't know how much time passed. We really don't know how much time passed. It could have been a very, very long time between the death of his mom and him meeting his new, meeting his wife. But the Bible will say that it made him happy and it gave him consuelo, finally, after the death of his mother, to meet his wife. Okay? Now, I know you guys are thinking, que crazy, alguien va a escoger a su esposa. <sighs> yeah, Isaac doesn't meet the girl doesn't meet his wife, his esposa, until she comes to be, to marry him. Crazy, huh? Okay, imagine not meeting the person you're gonna marry, but it was a different cultura back then, and that's totally fine, right? So, let's get into this story. Hey, um, let's pray. We're gonna do our verse. We're gonna finish our song. That's pretty cool. And I also want to talk about yesterday's Bible questions with you. Yesterday's Bible journal questions about friends. Because it is super important. It is super important, you guys, to have good friends and not friends that are going to mess up your, your life. Okay? So let's pray and get started today and learn a lot from the Bible. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and thank you for each of these students. I pray today for Fernanda, for Salma, for Holly, for Jayla, for Keanu, for Kiara, for Scarlett, for Safir, for Oscar, Mario, Andres, Frankie, Ethan, Emiliana, Danielito, Dueno, and Abiel. I pray that you be with each of the students. I pray that you protect their families, help them to be learning a lot in the house when they're frustrated. Please help them to, to take out their frustration and, and um, keep on going and find a positive attitude. I pray that you help them to become better for you every day and that if they're not Christians yet, that they make that decision, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's pack the servers only one time. It's Thursday by now. Half of you probably already sent me your videos, right? Here we go, Genesis 2, 17. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2, 17, porque el día que de él comieres, ciertamente morirás. Okay, I'm going to take these off and we're going to do it without it. You're probably like, it's something I can't even see it anyway. <laughs> okay, here we go. Genesis 2, 17, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Die. Genesis 2, 17, porque el día de que él, oh, perdón, porque el día que de él comieres, ciertamente morirás. Okay? Here we go, guys. Let's talk about the questions from yesterday. It said, why was it important for Isaac to have the right wife? Anybody got an answer? Obviously you did because you all wrote it in your Bible stories, in your Bible journals, right? Guys, it was important for him, and there's there's a lot of answers. I'm not saying that I'm the only one that has the right answer. I just want to share my answers with you. It was important for Esau to have the right wife because they were going to be in a keeple. They were going to be a team. And, God, and a, Isaac was going to be the father of Israel, which means he was going to be a leader. And everyone is going to be a leader in some point in their life. Okay? And you need to have a good equipo. You need to have good people around you to apoyar you, support you, animar you, encourage you. And not people that are going to convince you to do the wrong thing. 
He needed to have a wife that was going to be faithful to him. And it's the same thing with friends. Okay? So just like Isaac needed a good wife, we need good friends. Why is it important for you to have the right friends? Because God has something for you. God has a job for you to do, and friends are the people that people that convince you to do good things or convince you to do bad things. Animar you to do good things or animar you to do bad things, right? They influence your life, yes or no? You know that they do. They either influence you to do your homework the right way, to have ganas, to have enthusiasm, to obey your mom and dad, to, to have fun, but do it in a correct way. Or you have friends that, te that influence you to say bad words, to listen to bad music, to watch bad movies, to disobey your mom and dad, to not listen to anybody else, right? Or anybody, or your tea or your tea or anybody, right? And you know that you have friends like that. You know you have friends that help you to do good, and you know that you have friends that help you do bad. You know that you have friends that when you're with them, you don't get in trouble, you don't have any problems, and you know that when you, you have other friends that when you're with them, you're always in problems with your mom or your dad, or your abuelo, or your abuela, or your tia, or your tío, right? So, you have to choose your friends wisely because they're going to help you determine what you do in your life. Are you going to be a Christian? Are you going to love God like he loves you? Or are you going to listen to bad friends that want bad things for your life and don't really care? Because you know what? Those friends that do bad in your life, they don't care about you. Because if they cared about you, they would help you to do good, not to do bad. Well, let's see then. What are the characteristics of a good friend? And who can help you choose the right friends? God can help you choose the right friends. And your padres or your familia can help you choose the right friends. And your teachers can help you choose the right friends. And your pastor can help you choose the right friends. Right? I When I was younger, my mom used to tell me that she didn't like some of my friends. And she didn't want me to spend time with some of them. And she was right. She was right because those were the friends that didn't care about me and didn't want me to do good things. They wanted me to do bad things. Right? So you need to choose to listen to God. Listen to your parents. Listen to your family. Listen to your teacher. I had a teacher one time tell me, you see that friend right there? She's only going to get you in trouble. And he was right. He was right. Listen to your pastor. Listen to somebody in your life that says, mm, be careful with a friend like that. Right? Some of you guys love your friendships. And it's because they're good friendships. So make sure that you're a good friend. La Biblia dice, si quiere amigos, necesita ser un amigo. And you need to be a good friend. You need to help, the, you need to help your friends do good. What are good things in a friend? An obedient one, obedient to their parents. An amable one, respetuoso one. One that does not say groserías, bad words. One that does not listen to bad music. One that does not listen, watch bad movies. One that helps you to do good things, not bad things. If you have a friend that helps you esconder things that your mom and dad and your, and your abuelos don't want you to do, that's not a good friend. That's not a good friend. Okay, so be careful with that, you guys. Okay? That's why Abraham talked to to the servant and he said, Look, I need you to bring back a good person for Esau. If you bring them from this land over here, remember this land over here was adorando otros dioses. It wasn't, God wasn't their God. And Abraham said, No, promise me you will not bring a wife from the extranjero, from the land. Only from the family that I send you to. Okay, let's practice our song. We have the last estrofe. We're going to um, what's the word? read it first. Put your finger on it. Boom. It says, repeat after me and I'm going to tell you what it means. Second John warns Christians against false teachers. Okay? Segundo de Juan. Remember there's three, um, three books of John at the very end of of the New Testament, remember it goes, Mateo, Mateo, Marcos, Lucas, Juan, eight. there's Juan right there, 
Hechos hermanos Corintios, Galatas, Efesios, Filipenses, Colosenses, Tesalonicenses, Timoteo 1, Timoteo 2, Tito, Filemón, Hebreo, Santiago, Pedro 1 y 2, tres libros de Juan. Ok, so he wrote three little libros in the back of the book and then Judas y Apocalipsis. Woo! Ok, so it says 2 John warns Christians against false teachers. So, segundo de Juan nos avisa de los profetas falsas. Third John both encourages and warns readers. Ok, so tercero de Juan nos anima pero también nos avisa. Ok, Jude tells us to heretics we must not yield. Judas está avisándonos también que hay profetas falsos que necesitamos rechazar. And Revelation tells a prophecy revealed. Apocalipsis nos dice de lo, las profe, profecías reveladas. Okay, we know that. Who wrote the book of Apocalipsis? John, his vision of the end of the world. Okay, here we go. Let's do that last estrofa. Second John warns Christians against false teachers. Third John both encourage and warns readers. Jude tells us to heretics we must not yield. Revelation tells a prophecy revealed. <laughs> okay, let's do it one more time. Second John warns Christians against false teachers. Third John both, is, both encourages and warns readers. Jude tells us to heretics we must not yield. Revelation tells a prophecy revealed. Okay, there we go. You want to do the whole song? Of course we do. Of course we do. So here we go. One, two, three. The Gospels tell us much about our Savior, Lord. For each book has its truth that for us are stored. Matthew tells the life of Christ and shows him king. Mark unfolds him as a servant laboring. Luke shows Christ's humanity as son of man. John proves Christ the son of God, this was his plan. Church history is next and from the Acts we learn. How the early church crew went to Christ, men turn. Now from Paul's epistles we will learn much truth. In Romans Christian teaching, therefore every youth. Problems are set forth in 1 Corinthians. In the second, Paul apostleship defends. Galatians say salvation is in Christ alone. Ephesians tells of blessings that all Christians own. In Philipp Philippians we read of Christian joy. Colossians Christ's greatness one cannot destroy. In the book of Thessalonians we read of Christ's second coming and help when in need. The two books of Timothy are for the church. You'll learn doctrine and instruction when you search. Titus gives directions about church order. Philemon tells of the slaves who did err. In the general epistles first we see Hebrews and the gain of Christianity. James teaches us how to live the Christian life. First Peter teaches victory over strife. Second Peter writes a warning to obey. First John fellowship with Christians every day. Last verse. Second John warns Christians against false teachers. Third John both encourages and warns his readers. Jude tells us to heretics we must not yield. Revelation tells of prophecy revealed. Proud of you. Proud of you. Hey, we've been learning a really beautiful song in church lately that I imagine a lot of you guys haven't heard. So I'm going to try to remember to send the words in your next packet so that we can sing it. That'd be so cool. But remember, something about your next packet, you don't have school on Monday.